Today on the Survivor Diet Challenge, I'm going to show you how to turn this into this, into this. If you haven't been a Survivor Diet fan in the past, you might not know that I work full time. I'm off on the weekends and most Wednesdays. This means that I have to plan very carefully on my days off so that I hunt and gather and grow and pick and provide enough food for myself for the days that I'm working. I was lucky enough to get a lot of food yesterday because the weather was great, so I'm gonna have enough to sustain me for the next couple of days at work, and that's great. Today's plan is pretty simple. Bring some food to work and survive the workday. Then I'll come home for lunch and make some fish and asparagus. And what I hope to do is make some sea salt from the bucket of Atlantic Ocean that I got yesterday. What can I turn at work into this? This, into this, into this. Maybe you could do like a little balloon trick while. <laughs> That's a good idea. Make a balloon animal. Today on the Survivor Diet Challenge, I'm gonna show you guys how to turn this into this, into this. Not a very good survivor diet thing to do, but you never know when you're gonna to need to learn how to make a balloon animal. So, in the start of the survivor diet, you got a lot of boring days when you don't have patience or you're sitting at work. Where do we start? Start at the nose, that's gonna be the nose of our animal, dog or whatever, animal. Give it a couple of twists there. Twist here, and then another twist right here. Not bad, right? Anyway. Today I'm going to do an initial blood pressure test because it's the start of my second day and I want to make sure my blood pressure is either improving or not so bad. So, All right. All right, there's our baseline right there, 145 over 91 hope for some improvement. Now I allow myself a lot of conveniences in the rules because balancing the survivor diet with a full-time job and a business is sometimes the biggest challenge of all. It's not like I'm being thrown on a deserted island somewhere and I'm given 24 hours a day to live off the land. Because I'm a suburban survivor with a family and responsibilities and a job, I have to learn how to manage my time really well. And that's why I set in my rules that I am able to use my pots and pans and stove and refrigerator and other kitchen appliances and paraphernalia. Now I know that this is far from a true survivor experience, but it's a balance for someone like myself who has to live a normal life at the same time. In some ways, being a suburban survivor is a little less difficult, but in other ways, which I hope to show you in the next couple of weeks, it can sometimes be a little bit more difficult. Breakfast at work. Want some rice? Oh, I can't put. Eat. Yes, you're gonna eat some rice. Oh, you know so why are you gotta eat? Why you gotta be you big? Rice? I gotta be eating rice. I'm eating chocolate. She's not on the survivor diet, so she can eat chocolate. I need to be on the survivor diet. As Linda said, I'll be foraging in your freezer. <laughs> <laughs> and on the survivor diet, you need plenty of water, so I will go refill this mug. Hey, did you yes, know? Yes, thank you, Kathy. It's a good thing we don't have any patients right now. And you're probably wondering where all the patients are, but it's lunchtime, so... Here you go. Here's a lab <clears throat> case for you to check, doctor. Work at lunch, Kathy?
done. My reward for surviving the first week is going to be butter. Now, it's only the second day, but I'm already looking forward to that. I haven't really explained my weekly reward system yet to you guys, so here it is right now. Each week, after successfully surviving the week, I'm going to allow myself some food rewards. And I usually am going to allow myself three types of rewards each week. First week is going to be butter, a jar of wheat berries, and the one I'm looking most forward to is I get to eat all of my kids' garbage. Let me explain that one real quick. My kids are teenagers, and if you have teenagers, you know that they eat a lot of food, but they also waste a lot, and they scrape it off into the garbage pail. Any food that's gonna be scraped off into the garbage pail, that's fair game for me. That's my scavenger survivor rule. And in the past, I've used this in later weeks, in like week four or week five, but I watch so much food go to waste, so I'm gonna take advantage of that. I'm gonna be the scavenger survivor for my kids' meals. Um, I'm not gonna overdo it, and it's not gonna be something that I'm gonna take advantage of and make extra food for them, but hopefully you'll see what I'm talking about as we move on after the first week. If you'd like to see the future week's rewards for week two, three, four, and five, you can go to the rules of the Survivor Diet on the SurvivorDietChallenge.com website, or you can just wait until the following week when I'll describe the upcoming rewards for that week. So you may be wondering what I eat when I'm at work. Well, today I brought in the rest of that rice that I had uh, made yesterday, and I picked a few asparagus that looked like they were ready today and had maybe about six asparagus and I'll go home for lunch and I'll cook a little piece of that fish. I'll probably show you that uh, later on. My lunch was looking a little bland today, even though I added a small scoop of maple syrup to the pan. This is to be expected though during the first couple of days before I make my salt. Speaking of salt, after work today I boiled down a pot full of seawater in order to get about a cup full of salt. You really don't know how much you take salt for granted until you go without it. It doesn't take much to flavor your food, but without it, most food just tastes so bland. So here I am taking some salt. You've seen this done with maple syrup in the past videos if you watched that in the past, boiling down sap, and it's really the same process. This whole pot was full of seawater, and I boiled it down, and you see here that it's, it's like a super saturated salt solution at the bottom of the pan, and then it starts to become less liquid as that water boils off, you start to get the crystal salt formation and it's kind of hard to get rid of the last bit of moisture from it. So what I do is I make it as dry as possible, put it on a little piece of parchment paper and stick it into the toaster oven and I just bake it there and as that bakes all the rest of that water evaporates off of the salt and after that it's all kind of clumped together so I throw the whole clump into a small Cuisinart or food processor and spin it around a few times and voila, there you go. You have all the salt. This is all the salt that I'm gonna need for probably the next 40 days. And this is the way that you can get salt from the Atlantic Ocean. Whoa! Next time on The Survivor Diet. There we go, fish on. There's a raptor right there.
Thanks for watching and supporting my channel, you guys. For more videos like these, please don't forget, like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps a lot. I haven't really explained my reward system yet, but here's... Excuse me, and there's a guy banging.